Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today is the day 8 for our Palo Alto Panorama series. So in this video, we are going to cover how Palo Alto firewalls send logs to Panorama. Okay. So in this video, I am going to cover what is log, how we are going to configure log forwarding in Palo Alto firewall so that how these logs get pushed to Panorama. Right. So that we will be having a central view for our logs. Right. This video will be really, really helpful when you are troubleshooting anything because logs uh, will be important for your troubleshooting purpose. Right. So in this video, we are going to cover how we are going to configure the log forwarding from Panorama to Palo Alto firewall. If the logs you are not able to see, you can check those parameters, right? During your troubleshooting, like why the Palo Alto firewall is not sending or is there any issue with the Palo Alto configuration? So I'm going from the scratch. So you will be having any idea about it. So whenever you see those configuration in your organization, you'll come to know that. Yeah, this is what the configuration is in Palo Alto firewall or in Panorama for log forwarding. So it will be helpful for your uh, real time activities or maybe if you want to enable logs in your Panorama from Palo Alto firewalls. So I'll recommend you to please watch this video till the end so that you can understand these points and you can use it in your real time scenarios or configuring logs or enabling logs or something. And also I'll request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss a video from me. Without any further delay, let's get started. So friends, first of all, we'll understand what is log, right? So basically any device, okay, which generate logs during an event, right? So basically if some event happened to the device, it generates the log, right? So what is that meaning? What is that event? Okay. Now we'll understand. So basically event can be, let's say I created any rule in the firewall, right? I am deleting any rules. Okay or it might be the interfaces are down or maybe I have turned it up. Maybe something can happen, right? CPU utilization is high. Okay. It can be memory utilization is high, right? Or it can be the traffic has been processed. Like basically it can be allowed by the firewall or blocked by the firewall. So these are the examples of the event. There are so many events, but I, I just gave you some examples. Okay. So whenever we create any rules, it creates some kind of event, right? So that these events basically generates a log and the log will go to the system like the syslog server or any log servers where the administrator can see what exactly happened to the device. Okay. Now these logs are basically have some kind of severity or priority. We can say, right? Starts from zero till seven, right? So these are the emergency log alert or critical. So let's say CPU utilization is high or the power supply. Uh, let's say device has dual power source. Okay. Now one power source or the power supply unit is down in that case, it, it can be a alert or critical or emergency alert, whatever the system has set it up that. Okay. So basically what I mean is let's say a device for an example, UPS, UPS has an emergency for an power. If UPS or for an example, if I talk about networking, right? For an example, if the power supply has some issue, it can be an emergency uh, lookup 
or a priority issue because if do uh, other power supply is getting down in that case the device will be shut down and it will not be able to process anything so that is an emergency priority okay maybe the cpu utilization is high so what we can do is whenever these messages are when it generates by the system and it goes to syslog server right i can configure the syslog server to send email to system administrator or network administrator to look into this issue and it uh, it should be resolved as soon as possible because that is a critical for that particular device right and other can be like maybe we can work on later okay so basically logs are really really important that is the reason what we are doing is we are forwarding that particular log which is generated by palo alto firewall to panorama so that in a single console we will be able to see all the logs which is generated by palo alto firewall or the firewall which is managed by this panorama right so in a single console we'll be able to see all the logs that is happening to this palo alto firewalls right and we will come to know like let's say this panorama is managing 100 firewalls so in a single console we will be able to manage the firewalls what is happening with this firewall what log it is whether we should uh, take care of that log or not so in a single uh, page we'll be able to monitor everything like in a single go or uh, we can say uh, on a single console we'll be able to see all the logs of all the firewalls right so that is the reason we'll be understanding in this video so let's hit the lab and we'll see how we are going to configure this okay so friends now we'll hit the lab and we, we we are following the old lab what we have used for setting up the panorama and uh, pushing all the policies we are we are using the same lab now what we have to do is our task is to send all the logs from firewall to panorama right so this is our target round for this video let me give you a brief before we go on for a configuration okay so basically by default panorama runs on four cpus and eight gb of ram right now when you are running with this configuration basically the panorama runs in a management mode right to run this panorama in panorama mode you need at least eight cpus and 16 gb of ram right then only the panorama will run in panorama mode and then you will be able to enable the logs and also you need 100 gb of hard disk okay i'll tell you how to enable that particular hard disk in evng i'll show you maybe in not in this video maybe in some other video but i will assure that i'll be i'll be showing that and when i'll create that particular video i will put that particular video link over here in the i button not right now but once i create that i'll be putting that so friends uh let's get into the dashboard of panorama okay right now what we can see is 8 gb of cpus okay and the ram is 16 gb and the system mode is panorama okay so first of all we have what we have to configure is we have to check whether all the devices are sync or connected or not so we can see it is connected okay so friends first of all we have to go to manage collector and we have to create a collector okay so adding it here and we have to give a serial number so serial number would be where it will be on the dashboard so basically we are making this panorama as a collector so that he can collect all the logs right so add it and put this so once you put it all the options will disappear and then you have to click ok 
and you have to basically commit this okay so once you commit it what happens is there will be a dish that needs to be created it will be done after once you do this right once you create a collector and then basically it says no disk enabled for the log collector okay so what we have to do is we have to click on this okay and we have to go to disk add now you are seeing a disk a in what circumstances this disk will be appearing once you have what 100 gb of hard disk right and basically once you add this serial number okay it actually goes and check whether we have 100 gb of hard disk or not so once it is there it actually enables the disk okay i'll show you in the cli as well that where i can see this disk okay so click ok and again we have to do a commit okay so guys i can see that the commit process has been successfully completed i have to go to collector groups okay now here i need to basically add that particular collector okay so i'll just put the name as log server that's all any name you can put it so maximum retention period i'll just put it as 10 days because it's a lab and don't want to put more days okay if you have one tb or something so you can put it uh, more days or something yeah and you have to choose that particular panorama okay so whatever we have created in manage collector you have to basically select it and you have to click ok okay now again you have to commit this one to panorama you are not committing to or we are not pushing any configuration to firewall because this is happening in panorama itself okay so this is the process that you have to go through first in panorama and then you have to enable the log forwarding in the firewall configuration so when i go to manage collector i can see it is in sync okay so right now we are totally set for panorama configuration now what we have to do is we have to go to objects okay log forwarding add it so now i will be putting a name log firewall right and this will be shared one because i want everyone to send this particularly this configuration will goes to all the firewall right so i'll just add a name i just need a traffic log right now okay so i'll just put as traffic hyphen log okay so that i will be able to recognize this is a traffic log that i'm going to enable right now okay so anything okay so it has to be sent to panorama okay 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 done okay i'm not telling you about the cortex lake right now but that is out of context for this video maybe later once we study cortex lake what is that we'll cover that as well okay uh, after that what we have to do is we have to enable in the policy as well okay so i have to do it by one by one so that i'll be able to uh, basically because it is not possible to do it as a shared one because the policy exists in different different shared device group so that is the reason we will not be able to do it in a shared way so we have to go to action and every time we have to change it change the log forwarding to the name what we have created okay so action and then we have to enable the log firewall okay and we have i guess we have only one right now which is usa okay so we'll go to the action and we are going to enable the log file that's all and then we are going to commit and push okay so i'll just wait for this commit to finish and then i'll start the video again so friends the configuration commit is successful now okay 
So now what we are going to do is we have to go to this test machines and we'll generate some traffic and we'll see whether those traffic, those logs are coming to that particular panorama or not. So we'll log into basically in the, the site one and we'll try to access some of the websites. Okay. So maybe like google.com okay, or youtube.com same we are going to do with this as well okay and we will generate some of the traffic okay maybe yeah i'll just restore the sessions so that okay, no not this one the side three okay cancel cancel and I'm going to generate some of the traffic. Okay, I'll just reach through the sessions again. Okay. I just need some of the traffic to be initiated so that what uh, what is happening, I'll be able to see from panorama uh, tab, right? So, okay, so I will just go to the panorama monitor, okay? I have an option to select a device group or I can see all as well. Okay. If I go to India, I'll be able to see the logs. Okay. If I go to UK, so basically the logs will be pulled. It takes some of some time to get pulled. That is the reason it is not showing. So friends, now we are able to see all the logs. Okay. So if I go to any of those device groups and we will be able to see. So let's say if you are at all. Okay. Now if you want to search something. So for an example, you got a source. Okay. Somebody is saying that something is not working in Australia. So maybe 40.1 is not working. So what you can do is you are not sure from where the traffic is going because as you can see right now, it's a diagram but in real world you will not be able to see this diagram so we we you will not be able to show that from which firewall how it is going okay how the internet breakout is where the internet breakout is there you are not sure from which firewalls uh, the traffic is getting passed so what you can do is go to panorama and type that particular source ip address okay so four zero now with those particular source you will be able to see all the traffics which is getting allow or deny so at sitting at panorama i'll be able to see all the logs from all the sites and i'll be able to troubleshoot it so by getting the benefit what are the benefits that i'm getting from panorama i can push the configuration by sitting here i'll be able to push the configuration to all the firewalls i am able to see the logs for troubleshooting okay no matter where the firewall are sitting but i am able to see in a single console and i'll be able to troubleshoot very easily right so i will be able to know what is happening okay now with this said you can understand the benefits of getting panorama in your environment okay now you understand in which scenario the device group is required in which scenario the templates is is required okay and how the logs are getting processed so these are the things that i need to cover for panorama and there are a lot many things that needs to be covered so guys uh, this is what i wanted to cover in this video if you have liked this video please hit the like button if you have increased your knowledge put the comment if you have any suggestion for my videos please do it in email or you can send me a message on instagram facebook wherever you want thank you so much uh, for watching this video thank you and don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss a video from me Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.